This is Jason, and this is our first episode of To The Point, Landlords in St. John. We're taking questions from anyone who's watching. Uh, today's guest is Jeff Murray, who's the president of Canada Homes for Rent, and we'll be talking today about evictions and different processes. So I'll introduce Jeff Murray. How are you doing? Doing great. Thanks for having me. No problem. Not like I had a choice. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, um, so you've had Canada Homes for what? Uh, About six, six years. About six <laughs> years, yeah. So you've been doing this game for quite a bit. Yeah, I've uh, owned my own property uh, prior to that. So probably anywhere from 10 to 12 years. Um, enjoyed it then. Still enjoy it now. Excellent. Lots of experience with evictions, I'm sure. Uh, both good and bad. Both good and bad. Yeah, evictions are one of those things where... Uh, they can, uh, they can go your way, uh, and everything goes great. Um, and sometimes it doesn't go your way and you've just got to make sure that you, uh, go by the processes and, and ensuring the fact that, uh, everything is in order to, uh, to make it as smooth as possible. And I think that is the biggest problem. A lot of, uh, independent landlords have is the process. Uh, the Absolutely. We are with the tenancy act. Uh, they have a bad opinion of the tenancy board or the Residential Tenancy Tribunal, they call themselves now, formerly the Reynoldson, uh, and they don't understand the processes and the paperwork. Uh, for pro I mean, really, as far as across Canada, our eviction uh, process is probably the best in the country. Uh, definitely, uh, I would say, uh, pro-landlord, more so than other provinces. I've spoken to uh, many other uh, landlords, whether it be a, a management company or uh, a private a uh, person uh, that uh, that does this ty same type of thing in other provinces across Canada, and and uh, the way ours is currently set up is far easier, I think, for for uh, uh, folks like us uh, to to move forward when it comes to a breaking a uh, a tenant. Um, so, you know, the biggest problem I think a lot of people have is that they they don't understand or they're not aware. Uh, of what their rights are or how the process works. Um, right. And I mean, that's what we're going to talk about today and hopefully to, to maybe clear up some of that stuff that uh, some folks are, are wanting to know. Well, that sounds good. So uh, there are, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, three different types of evictions. We have people who don't pay the rent, uh, people who are wrecking the property, uh, noise complaints, garbage, and people doing illegal activity. So we have notice to vacate, final notice to vacate, and then there's term notices. So yes. let's start with, with the first um, type of eviction. The simplest one, I think, is if someone doesn't pay their rent. Um, what would be the process uh, as far as that goes? Sure. So if uh, you have an individual tenant uh, that um, by the second of the month has not paid, um, then it's, it's pretty straightforward from there. Um, you can go to www.snb.ca slash I rent. Uh, that is the residential, residential tribunals, uh, website where you'll find all the necessary forms, um, that, uh, you'll need to uh, proceed. So, uh, I brought, I printed off actually, um, all three of them, but if you can see this, uh, this is a notice, just a straight notice to vacate, um, pretty straightforward, one page, kind of fill in the blank, if you will, uh, with information that you should already know about your tenant. Um, so, um, filling that out, uh, with the appropriate information with the, the tenant's information, how much money they owe, uh, and all of your appropriate information. The key thing is, is that not only do you, you have to drop this off, so you can't email it uh, or anything like that. You have to actually deliver it to their door or mail it um, if you want to, if you choose that way. Um, and also, uh, the other thing that you can't forget is down at the bottom, down at the bottom of the sheet here, is the uh, residential uh, tribunal's uh, fax number. You make sure you have to fax that in as well. So uh, they won't accept it through email or anything like that. You must, must fax it. So again, it's, it's, it's taken the time, fill the sheet out appropriately, uh, and, uh, and send it in accordingly. Okay. So once you've done so, that gives you 15 days, or it gives them 15 days, if you will, to pay you. Okay. So um, 
after that 15 days is up, uh, then you're able to, yet again, it's another form you have to fill out. Um, and I didn't bring that one with me. I apologize, but it's another form that you're going to have to fill out for applications for assistance, um, whereby which you can then bring in, uh, the sheriff, um, and now you sometimes have to wait for that sheriff. Once you apply for him, the sheriff will contact you and make arrangements for you to meet them over there to change the locks. Um, so it's, it's pretty much just that easy. Um, so uh, once the, uh, the sheriff's been contacted, um, they'll, you can move forward with that. Now, sometimes and most times uh, the tenant will either pay you or uh, move on uh, once they, uh, that notice has expired. So, not very often you have to uh, to move forward with the uh, the sheriff. Okay, I think you said fifteen days, but there is a seven day window where they have to pay in full. I believe that's that is correct. Yes, so in the first seven days, if they don't pay, uh, or they only, then after that seven days, between the seventh and the fifteenth day, um, then you uh, you don't have to uh, keep them. But if they pay you in full within that first seven days. Uh, you do have to keep them. Okay. No, great. Now, I know with that process, the rentals didn't have to use fax off information. You follow up with them after the 15 days, contact the residential tribunal. They would contact the tenant, try to get a hold of them. I know in some cases they tried to act as a liaison with the tenant, with the owner, uh, to sort of work things out if possible. If not, at that point, they'd say, okay, we can contact the sheriff. And you just bring a check down to the Reynoldsman office, and they uh, thirty-five dollars, I believe the cost is, and they contact the sheriff. And then when the sheriff is available, they'll contact the they one to change the lock. Now that website you gave me for the forms that was www.snb.ca/backslash irent. Uh, slash irent, yes. Okay, I'm just and that is where you'll find all the necessary forms you need. Excellent. So with now, there's all kinds of forms on there. With the uh, notice to vacate, uh, I know if you've given out a few, I think, I don't know if it's three, and you can deliver them as early as the second of the month. That's uh, correct. Yep. And let's say you had a tenant that, you know, every month they're late, every month you're going to this process. What's the next step? You can do a, a final to vacate. So, how does so that yeah, so you actually only, that tenant uh, only has to be late once. Um, and then you're able to issue them a final notice. So you can see in that final notice to vacate, very similar to the notice to vacate. However, on the final notice, it doesn't matter if they pay you within the first seven days or not. Uh, you can move forward with the eviction afterwards. Okay. So not too often tenants are going to pay you on that when they get that notice, that, that the final notice. Uh, if they do, great. Uh, but uh, don't anticipate it. Um, at least I don't anyway. Uh, anytime we move forward with a final notice, it's basically, look, you obviously cannot continue to live here. You're not paying us on time. And it's just a thank you. We're going to move on from here. And it allows us uh, not to have to wait uh, a full month for the next type of uh, notice actually that we're going to talk about. So, you did, you know, we did the notice of vacate, the final notice of vacate, so the third one would be the term notice. Yeah, that's right. So uh, a term notice is, is just exactly that. It's, it's a, a notice that you use to just straight up terminate your, uh, your month-to-month uh, uh, tenant. Um, if you're in a fixed term uh, lease, uh, you're not going to be able to use this. Uh, but if you're just a straight month-to-month and you're having issues with your tenant, uh, for any reason, uh, whether it's non-payment or damage to your property uh, or anything uh, of that nature, and and or just you just want to do a renovation or anything like that, it's it's a 30-day calendar, 30-day. Okay, so it's it's a one month's notice, and it's not you can't give it at the, in the middle of the month for the middle of the following month. You must deliver it on the first. Can't deliver it on the second, uh, on or before the first. Um, and it just basically states that uh, you are uh, terminating that month-to-month lease and that at the end of that month, that lease will be terminated and you'll be each uh, going your separate ways. Uh, if the tenant doesn't leave after that termination, uh, you can apply for assistance. And at that point, there was some process with the sheriff. And- with the sheriff. And, and, I, and some people, um, 
may think that the sheriff is, is, is really hard or anything like that. It's, there's no nuisance involved, really. It's a $75 fee. Uh, you pay that right up at Service New Brunswick, so you can take a check uh, or cash or what have you uh, and pay that. Um, the the, the um, sheriff will contact you uh, once uh, they're ready. Uh, now, that, that can sometimes fluctuate depending on how busy uh, they are at the time. Uh, for instance, uh, I think the longest uh, we might have ever waited has been about six days. Uh, to, to, to contact them, but uh, never uh, has it been long enough that it's the, the, the notice has ever had to straight, like, stretch into the following month or anything like that. We've always uh, been able to, uh, to get them in there relatively quickly. Excellent. So yeah. I mean, those are three basic ways for an eviction. It, it can get more complicated than that, especially if you're dealing with a year lease or term leases. But these are definitely the basic, the simplest types of eviction. Right? Yeah, I think I think a lot of us here in New Brunswick, uh, uh, the most common of which is, especially if you're just a, a regular um, uh, owner, you know, you're not a management company per se, or you're not a, uh, somebody who owns many, many units, but the month to month tenancy seems to be the most common. Um, so these types of notices are going to apply to the, the better part of everyone out there. So I, I invite anyone watching us, we have 15 viewers, if anyone has any questions or even stories they want to share with us, please just type them in the comments and we will uh, take a look at those. I know before the broadcast started, and Jeff, I sent you to the message from Sean. Yep. Uh, he had a question for us, um, and I'll read that to you. Uh, what is the process you go through when a tenant doesn't pay rent, is given a notice to vacate, and abandons the apartment? You go through the sheriff's office to obtain possession of the unit. Now, right off the bat, I know, I think for a tenant to officially abandon a, a unit, they have to leave the keys behind or take everything out. So I think in a situation he's talking about, I'm not sure if the tenants have left the keys behind, but they obviously have left some items behind. Yeah, so um, anybody uh, who's in a situation where this is, this is quite common, uh, who, you know, the tenants leave uh, and they've left some belongings. It could be a lot, could be few. Um, it, it, I, it's, again, fairly simple. Uh, there's an application through the website again uh, for abandoned, abandoned chalets, uh, where, uh, by which you fill this out, you, you, you send it through to the uh, Reynoldsman, uh, taking pictures uh, and sort of a, an inventory of what's been left behind. Um, from there, the, the uh, Reynoldsman will... Uh, be in touch with you. Uh, this one, this can sometimes take a little while, um, but uh, my experience has been it hasn't been too awful bad. It I, I hasn't been too often that uh, we end up having to store the items uh, because in most cases, what will happen is they'll they'll take the value of whatever the uh, belongings are left behind. And if that value is equal to or less than the amount of money owed to you, uh, they will tell you to do what you need to do with it. In most cases, it just gets thrown out. So uh, that's uh, what ends up happening there. The sheriff doesn't typically get involved in, in those types of situations, uh, although, you know, they may get involved, let's say, unless you didn't realize that they left and you showed up with the, with the sheriff and, and um, they're, they're gone and you're there to change the lock. So that would be the only time that the sheriff's going to get involved in a situation like that. But, uh, like, for instance, what we've done in the past, uh, we walk in, okay, we've got a destroyed unit or we've got a, a not a destroyed unit with just some items left behind, uh, but we still want to be able to show the unit and, you know, try to get it rented as quickly as possible. Uh, we'll box up, box up those items, take them, either put them in the corner of the room or put them in one of the bedrooms so that we're still able to effectively show the place while we're going through the process um, uh, with the rentals of, of what do we do with these uh, leftover belongings. Again, I want to invite our viewers, if you have any questions, please just type them in the comments. Um, I see right now we have 16 viewers. So if any of you have a question or even a, a funny story that you want to share with us, please do. Um, if you love the video here uh, live, I don't know a lot of people have any. Jeff, do you have any uh, stories about evictions that you have? <laughs> yeah, uh, lots, of, lots of different ones, I guess. Um... Let me think. Uh, we've we've had to do a lot of different uh, different uh, types of we we've, we've had 
tenants have just basically have disappeared off the face of the planet. Uh, where you walk in, uh, we this is one of those uh, we had to apply for the abandoned chalets uh, where everything was there. Their toothbrushes were there. The stuff was in their closets were there. Food was in the cupboard. Everything was there. TV, everything. My always, you know, my always thing about like whether or not tenants are gone. If the TV's gone, they're gone. Yeah, the the TV's screen. guaranteed. Yeah. <laughs> guaranteed. They'll leave couches, right? Because couches are heavy and awkward. You know, uh, couches are popular. Food's popular for some reason, as expensive as that is. Uh, but the clothes and the TV, if the clothes and the TV are gone, there's a good chance they're gone, gone. Um, you know, mattresses and stuff like that. My gosh, the amount of mattresses we've thrown out over the years um, and all different types of things. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's quite shocking the amount of stuff uh, that, uh, that tends to get left behind. But um, uh, that was one of the ones that stuck out into my mind was the one that where basically it was like they just, had completely dropped off the face of the planet. Okay, so we do have a question here. Um, what if uh, a tenant leaves the unit that is on a year for breaking the window? Sorry, Jay, could you say that again? So, what if a tenant uh, they're in a year lease and they leave the unit? And they leave the unit. Yep. So left behind too. Yeah. Um, so uh, from there, uh, the abandoned chalets comes into play if they've just left and you're, you're unsure if they're coming back or you know if they'd given you a notice that they're leaving and then they left you still got to deal with that abandoned abandoned chalice you're not allowed to just go ahead and throw it out um the other thing is is uh the the i guess the downfall maybe in new brunswick if you want to consider that uh unless you go and try to go through small claims court uh any damages or or loss of money over the course of that year lease or anything like that Sort of the cost of doing business, unfortunately. You're not really going to end up getting that back. You'll be able to put a claim against uh, their security deposit that hopefully you would have taken at the beginning of the tenancy. Um, but uh, from there, um, the rentalsman or the res residential tribunal is not going to really get too involved in getting you anything other, uh, else other than that. So if the house or the apartment or anything like that rents for a thousand bucks and you've got a security deposit of a thousand, you can count on that's about all you're going to get back. Um, you know, there's, there's, uh, there's unfortunate things that take place when it comes to um, notice of vacates or vacate or, or, or tenants vacating um, where they lose their job or there's just, maybe they've changed jobs uh, and they're, they're in, a, in the middle of a lease and don't know what to do. Um, others just don't care, you know, and, and I've had a little bit of both, you know, I've had tenants that just don't care. I've had, unfortunately, some folks that have had a change of work and, you know, they may have wanted to stay at this particular house or, or apartment for a long time and are not able to anymore. And now they'll, all of a sudden they're stuck and not sure what to do. Uh, and uh, there's another bunch uh, that just lose their jobs and financially can no longer afford to live where they're living. Um, you know, there's there's also different ways that that hopefully uh, tenants are taking note on this because some folks – you know, if you're a tenant there, I, and I know them, they're leaving because they're scared or they don't know and they don't know what else to do besides bolt or they're embarrassed uh, where, you know, if they had come to us or, or their landlord and explain the situation, you know, we've had some situations where we just put it on the market right away and try to get it rented right away to help those folks out so they can get out. And then there's no damages done. Everything's kind of smooth sailing. You know, it's a just converting from one tenant to another. So you know, that it doesn't always have to be that you have to leave like that. And um, it's unfortunate that uh, there's not enough respect sometimes for people's, you know, investment uh, or just their belongings. Uh, but, you know, it's something that we deal with on a monthly basis sort of thing. Exactly. They left the apartment and they trashed it, you know. Um, smear pieces on the walls, uh, garbage everywhere ripped doors off, punched holes in the wall. I mean, there's some people that just are very bad victims. Now, I think uh, I want to touch on this because I know a lot of people um, in St. John, especially, and in other parts of the, the province, have had tenants that are active. They don't find out the place is wrecked until it's too late. Yep. 
just to touch on it, just to go over it, because I know it's a concern some people have. How do you prevent or limit the damage? What's a good way or a good process to go through to basically catch these people quick before they completely destroy your property? I I think the only thing you can do is just try, try to stop in regularly or semi-regularly. You know, if you see some things taking place, um, you know, quick 24-hour notice and you can go in. So 24-hour written notice dropped off, of course. Um, they say that you are going to just do a random inspection. Um, certainly helps. Um, try to do as best job as you can getting you know, the information from them, I guess, when you're doing um, uh, the rental application. Now, I will tell you, it's true, you know, of course, you know, you, how do you know the information they're giving you is correct and, and all that kind of thing. And, you know, what I agree, you don't know. But uh, luckily, with the online world these days, and Facebook and a lot of other things, people don't tend to necessarily um, watch what they post, I guess. So, you know, by doing a quick check or running a name through some of these uh, social media networks will certainly give you sort of a, uh, an idea of, of the person that you're getting if you're unsure. Um, you know, there's also young people that are, you know, it's their first time renting, so they don't really have a previous rental history. So what are you going to go off of besides that? And that's, you know, if you, they all have to rent somewhere and somebody's going to be giving them a choice, whether it's Canada Homes or whether it's uh, a private guy uh, within the city, um, somebody's also, you know, is, is going to be giving these folks a chance. And, and how do we know that, that they're going to turn out to be good tenants? You know, I've had a bit of both. I've had, you know, unfortunately the young folks tend to uh, tend to really take a beating out there as far as, you know, people not wanting to maybe rent to them because they want to rent to seniors or older folks where, but I'll tell you, I've had a, you know, I've had some uh, older tenants that are quote unquote professionals, uh, which you would consider to be ideal tenants, you know, on a, on an application and it turned out to be a nightmare. So, you know, it's, a, you do what you can do. You, you, you do the best you can do. And, um, and you just try to don't let any stone unturned, if you will, when it comes to, uh, to uh, putting somebody in your, in your apartment or, or house or, or property. Okay. No, absolutely. And I think the screening process and doing your due diligence is, is very, very important. Uh, going on just your gut feeling with a tenant is not a good idea because people always present themselves the best when they meet you. So do your, your credit checks, do your background checks, you know, check their, their past landlords, check their income, make sure they can afford the place. I know the rule of thumb usually it's 30% of your income to pay for the rent. Yeah, and I'll tell you, since we started uh, started uh, the uh, proof of income sort of a policy within Canada Homes, uh, we've been doing it a, almost about a year now. Uh, I feel that we're getting maybe a better tenant, I think, you know, uh, by which, you know, having to prove how much money you make, um, because that was not something uh, we had done before. We had just gone with... Um, uh, just proof of a job, let's say, or, or just employment confirmation. So we would contact the employer, confirm that they work there. That's about it. Uh, now our screening process um, allows us to dive right into their credit rating, uh, see what else their bills they have on their credit rating so that we can find out, you know, can they afford the rent? Because if even if they make three grand a month, you know, if they have two grand or 2,500 uh, in bills each month uh, for other things, what's the chances you're going to get your money? Not very good. No. You're either going to spend the time, you know, the big thing is you're either going to spend the time at the beginning of the tenancy to make sure they're great, or you're going to spend the time at the back end of it when they're gone, cleaning up what's left. So, you know, it's a lot of the time, sometimes we have to look ourselves in the mirror. I've made mistakes countless times, you know, and it's cost, uh, numerous amounts of money uh, to put these places back together. We've had a, we had a bad one uh, just over on city road recently. Uh, you know, the big, it took place, uh, you know, a couple of months ago, but we, it took a few months to get this thing put back together and, and make it so that it was livable and, and to try to draw a, a better, uh, a better crowd. No, that's great. Um, 
I don't know if anybody out there watching has some questions. Um, you know, post them or just say hi. Post them in the comments. Let us know that you're out there watching. Um, I don't know, Jeff, is there anything else you wanted to mention? Tonight about um, I think when it, uh, when it comes to uh, the notice to vacates or the, the termination notices or anything like that, a lot of people just don't want to be bothered. They just want them gone. And the lo- all I can say that the longer you delay things and the longer you just try to do it yourself by just telling them to leave or things like that, uh, you, you just prolong the process and make it even worse. Um, I think just going at it the, the, the way it was designed to go about, which is just with the paperwork, which is a, can be a real big pain for a lot of people. Uh, but just by going through that process, we'll make, uh, we'll make it much, much easier for everybody. Excellent. Well, yeah. Thank you very much, Jeff. Um, I know at Canada Homes, we do offer an eviction service. So if any landlords out there that um, don't want to tackle you know, the process themselves, you know, we're professionals, we're the feed, and we can go in and do the eviction for you, get them out. Um, the service that we offer on the side, um, just give us a call. If anybody wants to hear another topic on this show, I plan on posting these weekly on Sundays. Or if there's a guest you want us to bring on, please let me know in the comments. Or if there's any questions you have, again, you can email me at jason at canadahomesforrent.ca, and I'll put that up on the screen. So, have it. Okay. So you can definitely uh, send me an email if you have a comment or a question, or if you want to give me a call, I can call me on my cell phone, and I'll put my number up on the screen as well. Um, if you want to be a guest, let me know, give me a call, and we can have you on the show as well. So this is our first show. Um, we'll work out the buttons as we go. I think it makes pretty well. Jeff, any final words? Yeah, I just wanted to uh, want people to know that, uh, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to mean St. John, uh, Fredericton, Moncton, St. Stephen, Sussex, you know, all these rules uh, for things like this apply to all over New Brunswick. So uh, the stuff that we talked about here today uh, doesn't just apply for St. John, New Brunswick. Uh, it'll stretch right across uh, the province. So uh, anybody in any part of the province that, uh, that happens to, to run into a, a situation or just unsure and they just need something answered by all, by all means, reach out to us. We'd be happy to, to uh, just guide you uh, in the right direction. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Jeff. I just no problem. You. Oh, we just had a question pop up. So we're, we're going to do this. Um, actually pretty good question from Mark Hatfield from Homestar. What about tenants that bring in bed bugs? Ooh, yeah. So, questions. yeah, that's, you know, so for instance, for example, you know, anybody who's had experience with bed bugs or has uh, had um, bed bugs themselves uh, should know that they don't, they're not like a, an ant, maybe, or flies. They don't just appear out of nowhere. Um, somebody physically has to, to bring them in. Um, so whether that be it, in a book bag or on clothes or a shoe or anything like that. It, they have to be brought from one place that has them into another place. However, they will travel within the building. Okay. So, but they won't travel across the street to get into a building kind of thing. So this is something that, that happens um, a fair amount across the province. I would say it's not just a St. John, New Brunswick issue. It's not a, just a Moncton or a Fredericton. Uh, these are this type of issue actually happens all across uh, the province and all across the world, actually. Um, the the thing that uh, I've always found when it comes to like if we're stocking a multi unit building. OK, so we've got uh, a 10 unit building, let's say. And all of a sudden there is bed bugs in one of those units. The first thing you need to do is regardless of whose fault it is or anything like that, is get your exterminator in to do a building check. Uh, that will likely hopefully tell the culprit uh, uh, who has perhaps brought them in. Um, so as soon as you get notification of this, uh, that is the first thing you want to do is to get that uh, exterminator in and do a, a general check of the building uh, to verify uh, where the source may be. 
Um, if you're able to nail it down to just one unit um, and he's easily able to tell you where the source likely is, at that point, you can, you know, uh, deal with your tenant the way you'd like to, whether it's you want to evict them because they brought them in, whether or not you want them to pay for it, you can try. Uh, there's nothing the residential tribunal is going to do to help you with that. But if you want to try to have them pay for the, the sprays uh, to uh, get rid of the problem, you can certainly do so. Um, and that's kind of your only two, I guess. Uh, and then the third one, uh, I guess, is uh, basically just pay for it yourself, which uh, honestly a lot of us end up doing um, just because of the fact we've either – don't want to have to deal with a vacancy or because we don't want to have to try to find a new tenant uh, or any of those reasons, I guess. Um, so we've gone through it and just gone with the sprays. And as long as that tenant is working with us, uh, ensuring the fact that they're doing what the exterminator is asking them to do, we'll continue to work, move forward with them. We're dealing with one right now that unfortunately they have not been working with us and We've had to move forward with a uh, a termination to so that we can get rid of the problem. Right now, I know in my own experience, it's it's best to keep them as long as you can. Because at the end of the day, if the tenants are doing what they're supposed to do, it's good to have what I call live bait. Because the bed bugs yes. out if there's nothing them for them to feed on, and if there's nothing for them to feed on, they'll either hibernate or they'll move to the next available food source, which unfortunately is the case with apartments. Yeah. So it's good to keep them in the unit until you eliminate the source. And then at that point, if you feel that, you know what, I don't feel these people are going to, you know, keep up their end of the bargain or they're going to, you know, the worst culprit for bed bugs is your furniture. And unfortunately, I know we will see you buy your furniture all the time and that can bring in bed bugs. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's, I think sometimes uh, it's a little bit of a myth that, you know, bed bugs are drawn to dirty properties or anything like that. Um, it's not always the case. Um, uh, and it can be just as easy as you going and sitting in someone's house or apartment and they have it. And once the bug is on you, um, it's there and it'll just follow and travel with you until you get to another location and, and off it jumps. A lot of people go on vacation, take them back with them and their luggage. Uh, airplanes are another place that have bed bugs. So if you go yep. to hotel, there's a risk that you could bring them back. Now, it's my understanding bed bugs don't like to be moved. They will get off you, but in some cases, they'll actually get inside your luggage or inside, say, a shirt pocket, and you'll take them home with you. Um, buildings that have shared laundry, again, you know, you gotta, you got to be careful with these type of things. Uh, I've recommended to smaller landlords, and it can be difficult, I know, with the Canada Homes, you can do. 20 move-ins in a month. You're not going to inspect everybody's stuff. But for you people out there that may have a house you're renting or a single apartment in your basement you're renting, before that tenant moves in, check their stuff. There are telltale signs for bed bugs. Call your exterminator. I know uh, Outlaw Pest Control, give them a call. Mark asks the question, I'll plug his business. Check it out. Look for those signs. And then if they have any, don't let them move the stuff in and explain to them you know, the process. Because you don't want to bring them into your house. It's a costly endeavor. To bring very absolutely, good. absolutely. Uh, we've had we've had good success getting rid of them, but sometimes it's taken a while. Some of it's not taken as long, but it, it really all depends on who you're working with uh, as far as the tenants go. Uh, some are very, very great to deal with uh, and to work with, and others not so much. And you know they don't really help the the problem at all, which is somewhat surprising, but. It is out there. Yes. And at the end of the day, with bed bugs, because even if you, let's say you had a bigger building and the word gets out, then people, you know, the word bed bugs can make you scratch just by saying it. So it can scare people. And instead of having mass panic, educate your tenants. And I've done that in the past with larger buildings that I've been involved with, where I will meet with all the tenants and explain to them how bed bugs work so they're not panicking. They're not leaving, they're not spreading rumors that, oh, that building has bed bugs. Absolutely. You can contain bed bugs to a unit and you can get rid of them. Now, it yeah. takes, if everyone does what they're supposed to do, it could take about four weeks. You come in, they yep. spray, two weeks later, they spray again, two weeks later, they spray again, and then that last spray, usually, if everyone did what they're supposed to do, you yep. get arrested with bed bugs. That's right. 
and then you're free and clear. So try to reduce the panic. Don't get everyone upset. Believe me, it, it's well worth talking to your tenants in a larger building. Yep. About that. And don't just jump down, uh, you know, and say it's the tenant's fault. Get out because you, know, you don't want them leaving. Cause they're going to yeah, the, the, that's right. And the other, the other popular thing is, Jay, too, and you've seen it uh, just as much as I have, is uh, people buying used furniture. Right? I mean, that in itself, more so than people just maybe going to somebody's house that has it, uh, might be the biggest uh, bed bug you know, disbursement <laughs> around a city than, uh, than that. Just, you know, used furniture, big one. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, need some more information to anyone there watching, if you're concerned of what to look for, uh, the different types of signs of bed bugs, the little oil, looks like little oil stains on mattresses, little dots, they're brown. That's actually the piece of um, What their eggs look like, there's things you can look for. Uh, call your local pest control, call outlaw pest control. They're trained, they can tell you signs to look for so you can keep them out of your building like i said if you have a smaller you know fourplex duplex or just a single apartment that you rent tell the tenant yeah we'll move you in but we need to inspect your furniture first to ensure that you don't have bed bugs yeah check your mattress they're called bed bugs for a reason they go to your bed because that's where you sleep and they're nocturnal and they sleep night and that's where you want to check again another thing i want to mention too with bed bugs since we're on that topic um if your tenant does have bed bugs, tell them not to sleep in different places in their house because they will go to those places like your couch. Your couch is very difficult to get bed bugs up. Beds are a lot easier. So you can buy bed bug bags at your mattress store to cover them up so you can't get yep. them. And these things help get rid of them quicker. Absolutely. Yeah, that's the first thing people do uh, typically is once they're getting bit on their beds, uh, they immediately move to their couch. And once they get in the couches, uh, any uh, pest guy will tell you that it's almost impossible to fix that. Like it, you know, typically your, uh, your uh, couch will be uh, getting thrown out at that case because it's just, it's, it's impossible to get them out of all those little crannies and nooks of, of, a, of a couch. And I want to stress uh, to any of the people out there that do rents that think they can go buy the off the shelf bed bug spray. That doesn't work. Okay. It will kill the live bugs. It will not kill the eggs. Yeah, get the professionals in because it can get out of control, and when it gets out of control, you lose everything. Absolutely, there's I've seen some of the worst cases in the province where they're literally crawling on the walls. I'm talking to the tenant at the door, and as they're talking, I see a bed bug crawling down the shirt. I mean, you don't want to get to that point. And tell your tenants, you know, if you ever get bit, if anyone calls to complain, say that they got fleas or or roaches or anything, go investigate. Get someone there to look. Make sure it's a flea. Make sure it's a because if it's a bed bug, you're going to be if you don't get them quick, you can get out of control. Yeah, and as and as landlords, I think that we also we can't come across too strong when it comes to tenants when they're moving into their place because they will get scared and they won't tell you. You know, so you know when you're in the infancy stages of the tenancy and you're coming across as a guy who, you know, if you get this or if you bring this or if you do this, it's going to be on you. You're not going to find out about it. And that's the worst thing. You know, the worst thing is not knowing and then having it be a big problem. I would much, much rather our tenants tell us immediately when something happens, whether it's a good or bad, because that way there we can, we can appropriately take care of the problem. But if we don't find out until it's too late and the whole building's full of them, well, that really doesn't do us any good. Exactly. We got a little off topic with the evictions with bed bugs. <laughs> oh, that's bound to happen. Itself, right? I mean, it's, that's a huge problem. Right. And in other cities, um, it's not fun to deal with. Believe yeah, me. good question. All right. So if anyone, unless someone else has another question, um, just type it in right now. I'm going to go off the air here in probably about 30 seconds. Again, I want to thank Jeff Murray, President of Canada Homes for Rent, for coming on for our first episode uh, next Sunday. Uh, I'm going to have real estate agent Michelle Hardy on with Coldwell Banker. Um, he's sold millions in, in inventory uptown just in the last year or two. We talk about some trends. Uh, if anyone has any questions about that. Um, of course, if anyone has a suggestion of any guests you want to see or if there's any information you want to get, uh, we will find a professional and we will bring them on to talk about it. Okay, so I guess that's it. No other questions. Fantastic. Uh,
Thanks for having me. Oh, no problem, Jeff. It was a pleasure. I'll see you at the office tomorrow, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone found this, uh, po- this broadcast valuable with good information, please share it, like it, and share it with your, your Facebook friends because uh, this is recorded and it will stay on Facebook. You can share it. Other people can watch it. Other people can get the information. Again, you can contact me if you want to be a guest or if you want a certain guest on or if you have any questions. Please, you know, give me a call. All right. Thanks for everyone. Oh, I just had a question. Everyone likes to wait till the last minute. This is a good one. This this question's uh, actually a headline. How do you handle someone with medical marijuana? Well, at first I asked him the shit. No. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that, 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 no, that's a hot topic because marijuana is. It is, good. absolutely. Uh, thanks to uh, Trudeau, the Trudeau show. Um, I look myself, and Jeff, you can correct me on this. I look at marijuana smoking as smoking. Cigarette, marijuana, uh, oregano, I don't care what it is. If you're smoking something in your apartment, I know it's a policy of Canada home, no smoking of it. I think landlords out there need to make that clear when they move in any substance. So with medical marijuana, I know they need it for medical reasons. There are other ways to ingest medical marijuana. Um, but if it is a prescription, they can step outside and smoke it. You can have a, a smoking area for them. Um, but I would make it clear when you're interviewing the people for your apartment, you know, do you smoke? Ask them, do you need medical marijuana? And if they say, yes, I do, say, well, if you rent this apartment, so you know, it's non smoking of any kind. Um, and make that clear. If they want to do, go for a while. I've told tenants, go for a walk. I, I myself have nothing against people that smoke marijuana. If they need it, recreational or medical, it's, it's because it's such a pungent smell in a building, uh, it can turn people away. It can make them feel sick. It smells awful. Go for a walk. Go down the street. Just do it off the property. Um, if you're a landlord, it doesn't don't mind the smoke of your unit, then let them do it. I guess it's up to the landlord. Yes, it is. And, uh, you know, we, we had a meeting just about a month ago uh, about what, you know, how we were going to move forward when, with, when this uh, came to light. And I think just, again, uh, I think we changed it in our leases probably maybe about almost last year uh, where we had to be a little more specific, where there was no smoking of any kind. Um, just because of the fact that some folks for whatever reason saw no smoking in the lease and felt that was only cigarettes. Um, so medical marijuana, marijuana in general, um, you know, it certainly falls under that smoking, um, realm, uh, when it comes to our, you know, at least our policies. And I think for the, you know, the landlords out there, uh, that is going to be something that they're going to have to be very clear on because, um, again, you cannot take anything for granted where you can just assume people know your rules or just assume people uh, know anything. Um, you've got to make sure you lay it out and ensure the fact that you're uh, putting everything in writing so that uh, when it comes time that you want to evict or you're having some problems, you know, you can be very clear and say, look, this is what the rules were. You knew this when you moved in. Um, so there should be no discrepancies. Well, and that's, I think, how you need to handle it. Um, I know in other provinces it's different. Uh, I've talked to some people in other provinces about this medical marijuana thing. Some governments, local governments, are passing legislation about it. Uh, I don't think in the Brunswick they are. So I just treat it like any smoke. Absolutely. Absolutely. And if, if you say it's not smoking and you make it clear that it's not smoking of any kind, then you're good. Uh, yeah. But you can't, you can't leave that door open. No, you can't. And if you have a tenant that is and you don't want them to, give them a written warning, talk to them. If they don't comply, you know, term notice. Yep, absolutely. Move somewhere else. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it just, again, it just all goes back to following the proper parameters uh, and trying not to constantly go to just asking or anything like that. Everything's got to be in writing. And it's just, it's once you put it in writing, then you're good moving forward. Okay. Yeah. If someone else wants to throw up another last minute question, uh, we're going to sign off here in about uh, 10 seconds. Again, you know, it was great having you on, Jeff. Uh, I think it was a good show, first show for us. 
Uh, we've had 15 viewers, pretty between 10 and 15 through the whole broadcast. Um, we've had some really good questions, so people have had questions. Again, if anyone wants to, if you do send a question, if you're nervous, it doesn't flop up on the screen unless I let it. So I always read them first. If you're a little bit nervous about your question, throw it out there. If it's something I've, that's, that we're not going to show, then I won't put it. Um, next week, like I said, we will uh, we'll have another episode. Um, probably around the same time. And again, if you have topics, if you want to be on the show, get a hold of me, uh, get a hold of Jeff, give us a call, we'll have you on the show, or we'll have your topic discussed on the show. Mm-hmm. All right, Jeff, again, thanks very much. And uh, everyone out there, have a good night. Great. Thanks, Jason. Signing off. This is To the Point, first episode. Thank you.